Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. You guys, okay. There's a couple ideas going into this idea. Last year, I did a video very, very similarly. And then I was watching a couple videos of some of my favorite creators, especially Jessie from Jessie Styles. I watched one of her like two years ago videos. I don't know why. Don't ask me what went, you know, how I got down that rabbit hole. Essentially some idea of if I were to start all over, like completely all over, but with the same knowledge that I have, what would my collection look like? And I've been thinking of doing that video and then, you know, our queen, our queen over here, Cassie Thorpe. As I always say, bow down. She's literally the reason why I started my YouTube channel. I love her so, 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 so much. She did an amazing video, which went into like different categories and was a little bit different of if she was to start all over, but she chose from bags that are only currently available. This is me, this is a very me coded video, okay? So I had to go ahead and choose like random archival bags. Some from my own collection, but most just, you know, my holy grail pieces. If I were to start my whole collection over what would I choose? First and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I came up to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put up videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. What would the first piece be that I'd collect? If I had to completely sell everything, have empty shelves, not one singular bag, not even a bag to hold me over with, what would the first bag be? And that is such a good question. You know what's interesting? <laughs> because I don't know why I didn't buy this bag or haven't bought this bag, but I will and I still want one. I think that a Sophia 10 from the row would kind of be a perfect bag for me. Mary from Mary's room, it seems like she loves hers and I, it's just so pretty. It's just so me, it's so us, you know? Like there's something minimal but chic about it. It's just so darn well made. And especially with a collector who has a 16 and a Sophia, I really trust Mary's opinion. My 16 bag, which there we go, we can see her now. I love it. I have a confession to make. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I don't know why I don't wear her that much, but she's the perfect, perfect dinner bag. I can also run errands with her. I don't know why. I, and the only thing that I've talked it up to is it being a little bit wider. And so my girl math is thinking if the Sophia is essentially the same, the same exact bag, <laughs> but a little bit more sleek and a little bit less wide, I just have a feeling I'd really like only need that bag. And then a bag from the row that I, the only reason, well, there are two solid reasons, which I think are very valid, <laughs> why I didn't get when it came out, because I knew it wasn't gonna be a, like a permanent collection piece. I knew it was only gonna be for the time being. And yet it just is so wildly inappropriate for my lifestyle, but I still would want one one day. The row Elio bag in that dark, 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 dark brown, like, oh my God, if I was like my mom and I weekend, you know, and I was a weekender and then I, every single week was popping in out of the city and going all kinds of cute little upstate, whatever stays a couple times a year, once a year or something and just living a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous life because you are living a fabulous life. If I did that, I would, I would have bought the Elio bag in no time. Like I would have had no qualms buying it because I saw it many times at the Rose store. It's just very me. It's just very me. And my mom loves it too. So you know that it's a good bag because we're different. And that smooth leather, I don't even have to talk about it, but it's a chunky, chunky bag. And I don't carry very much. Even for a weekend trip, I'm fine with a Keep All 45. That's what I use. And even my clothes only take up half of it. And then I have like my red light therapy in the other half. Relatable because that is really what I took last week when I was at, you know, upstate. So that's exactly, I don't pack a lot. The Elio bag would just be so perfect as a weekender bag. And then, yes, I know everybody's probably thinking, but Sophia, you have 10 bags from the row that are all the niche bags that are all the weird bags that nobody knows about. Why aren't you including those? Because this is fantasy land. 
I love, I just don't want this to get confused because I love my collection of Thoreau. It is my pride and joy, honestly, in my, you know, bag world. However, again, this is fantasy land because I love all of them together. If I were to smush them all into like three bags only, these are the ones that I'm picking that happen to be the much more mainstream ones because yes, the third bag on this list would be a Margot 15. And to make it a little bit more me, it would be the belted Margot 15, specifically in the Bordeaux wine color because could name a more perfect bag. Like honestly, kind of doesn't matter what your lifestyle is, kind of doesn't matter where you live, kind of doesn't matter whether you are in a city or a car, kind of like none of those things matter, that bag could work for everybody. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if I really think about it, unless you're one of those people who I like, I genuinely used to be who I only wanted a crossbody bag, name a person and a lifestyle and a choice that that doesn't work. You know what, maybe I'm generalizing, but like, it's a bag. It's so simple at the end of the day. And it's such a perfect size, everything about it, it's open. So you can just pop everything in and out. I think a laptop fits. And I love, I've always loved, I've always loved the belted Margos, which I think is why I haven't saved up for a Margot because I would wait for those to come back or buy one that's in a relatively good state. And so fantasy land, yeah, I'd take that Bordeaux wine Barolo colored belted Margot 15. And then you might be asking yourself, we know Hermes is gonna be on this list because this is, this is fantasy land, people. And I have two because again, apparently, in, like, I think maybe a part of this because I'm so, like, yes, some of my bags, aka my <laughs> Blue Marine Kelly, some of my bags are more mainstream. But if I, like, I think I like that because I have variety then and it feels so me in accumulation. And so when I was doing this list, I was like, oh, I wonder if I'm making up for me not having mainstream bags or like more generally widely accepted bags by having a bunch of random bags. I have to explore that in myself. Maybe I'm weird for weird sake and I should correct that in myself. So on this list, I was like, we're just gonna go with the classics because as I just talked about in my last video, yes, I think I want a Birkin 35 and all of you got, you have no idea. First of all, just how, like, how thankful I am for all of your comments because the general, like very general, very, you know, staple, concrete, shall we say, consensus was that the 35 over the 40, 35 over the hack, 32, I almost said 23 because dyslexia, but yeah, the, the 35 does seem like the perfect bag. I'd go for her in a chocolate brown. How do we say this name, Havan? I think that's my color. It's probably not gonna be what I end up getting because again, this is why Fantasyland is so cool because I think one of the things that I've realized is that I love my collection and that's the part, like that's the magic in collecting, that's the magic in having this, you know, break the, what is that, the third wall, the fourth wall, break the fourth wall? I don't know. Like having this community, having you guys, having me being able to look at myself, look at my collection, look at how things look on me, how things look all together. It's part of the magic is buying something because it's an amazing price, because it's an amazing condition, because it came up and it never comes up. But then you have to kind of do that with every piece after, if you're as crazy and curated and organized, you know, heavy focused as me, because I will say to myself, like the Sophia bag that's in a very kind of similar color, I was like, why would I do that? I can't do that if that comes up because I already have a 16, you know? So this is me thinking of fantasy land, but it, it, you know, if a Birkin in any color in a 35 comes up and I do maybe want, I don't know, I'm not sure yet what hardware, that's the one that I'll just let, exactly, I'll just let the handbag gods, but I guess if I were to just go for it, I'd get gold hardware in that really yummy, 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 yummy brown color. But again, that's why this is fantasy land and I am still over the moon with my collection that I am blessed and so grateful to have been collecting. Redundant, yes. On to the next one. Of course, I'm gonna add in a Kelly because again, if this is fantasy land and I'm only allowing 10 staples, this is my 10 staples and then we're gonna do five bonuses because I couldn't stop, I don't know. I couldn't stop myself. So there's gonna be a Kelly because I thought, ooh, would a Picotin be really cool? I don't know what a Picotin is like to wear. We're gonna be staple, realistic concrete on this list. 
I have always had my eye on this one bag and it sold, thank God, because I, you know, like I just stared at it every once in a while on the real real. A Lizard Kelly 28 in like a weird green brown, green gray, one of those colors, that is my holy grail bag. I think if I were to have one bag, uh, which I think I've talked about, so I'm not, this isn't like randomly coming out of the blue. If I were to just have one bag in my entire collection, I think Hermes Kelly, a 32 or 28, I love my 32, it's not that big, but in lizard and in a weird, really cool grayish, greenish, brownish color. I think that's my holy grail bag. Okay, those are the top five. Those were the things that I thought of immediately. <laughs> and then it got confusing from here because then I said, well, I need fun ones and I need one for an event and I need a whatever. So we're going a little rogue from here. And some of these might be kind of unexpected because I am not going to lie to you guys. Actually, I switched some things around so she's not in this cabinet anymore for the time being. I would put my civet on here. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I still have yet to contact civet because the handle is completely broken. It closes, but like I'm scared to wear it now that it's gonna fly open and all my stuff is going to go out. I love, love my civet symmetry pochette. And now this, I still love civet so much, but I would be a little afraid to put this in a forever, forever piece. I really want the lizard one. Now I'd be a little afraid to get an exotic because the clasp is constantly breaking. I don't, that doesn't, the math doesn't math on that. So I thought to myself, I know this is gonna be controversial. I just can't get my brain off of the Laura Piana L19 and Ostrich. I just can't. You guys have known this before it was a thing. I've had my channel for about a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. And one of my first few videos, I started talking about the Laura Piana bag because I don't know why I've always loved it. And I really like the old style. I really like the newer style, but something about ostrich, I don't know. I have owned an ostrich bag from the row before. It's the only bag from the row I've ever sold thus far. And I loved the way that ostrich felt. It was already such a worn bag. And it felt amazing. Like, it felt amazing. It looked amazing. So, and a Laura Piana L19 and Ostrich. I can't, I, she is in, she's been living in my brain rent free for the last several years. And then again, some of you, I'm, I'm, I'm totally joking. I'm sure nobody's thinking to themselves, but what about this next? But if you've thought to yourself, where's Bottega? You know, because I, I am the row and Bottega. That's my vibe. And a little old Celine, which we'll also get to. Bottega was a difficult one because if, I could just make a list of Bottega. I'm not going to lie. It was very difficult for me to not put my shoulder pouch on here, my chain pouch. They're just so good. And so I thought to myself, because you know that my medium sardine is like my favorite bag of all time. And she's my cherished. She's really dark, so you can't see her, but she, she is back there. I love that bag so much. Just for the sake of being fun. Just for the sake of being fun, because that was my 30th birthday bag. It's my, it's truly, you know, in my list, it's been my top two. It's probably my top one, but for the sake of being crazy, for the sake of being holy grail, I've already put a lot of dark chocolate or larger bags on this list slash, I guess I'm hinting as to what's to come. Um, honestly, there is a color that I can't get out of my brain. There's the color called string. I've talked about it at least eight times. The color called string that Bottega came out with like six -ish months ago, something like that. And the original size sardine with the chain strap. If the prices were to ever go down to 1500 for that, I would double up because I don't know why. Thank God, my medium sardine is perfect. She's so perfect and it sounds like I'm buffering. I'm not, I'm not making excuses. I really, really, really do love that bag. But I love a chain strap also. And I'm actually not sure if it would work, so thank God, my medium is literally perfect for me. But something about the chain mixed with the sardine, mixed with the intrachato leather, mixed with the color string, honestly, chef's kiss. And then another rogue one, which I have looked for a lot, they're very rare, especially in this very specific color that I want. But I keep seeing another one of my favorite creators, Nori Anna, I keep seeing on her channel, especially during her Copenhagen vlog, <sighs> The gray-ish, gray-ish, whatever, natural color python pouch. Oh, gee, Daniel Lee. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Then I have a staple from Matthew Blazy and a staple from Daniel Lee. That python pouch, I will, I will perpetually be looking for one. 
I love, 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 love that bag. And then it's like evening, but you can wear it out. But you can wear it and be cool. It'll dress up and y you know, the thing. You guys know my snakeskin boots are kind of like my thing that will never leave my collection. And so snakeskin bag, the no brainer. Okay, a couple more, I will go quicker. This is another rogue one. Can you believe I'm putting this on my fantasy wish list already? I'm asking myself, I guess, <laughs> because you guys are probably like, say the bag. <laughs> It hasn't even come, haven't even seen this in person, never even seen this in person. And yet again, another thing that just can't, can't, I can't get out of my brain for some odd reason. From Magda Boutram, the Brigitte Trapeze in the wine color. And yes, surprising, right? There are a couple maroony, dark, deep colored bags in this list. That bag, I cannot get my brain off of. It is the epitome of gorgeous, yet chic, yet different, yet a little minimal, yet not too minimal. Something about it is just seems to be my current vibe. And I think like for a forever, you can take it to a wedding, but you can also take it like to a museum randomly. That bag looks kind of perfect. And then how could I neglect one of my bags that had I done my top 10 favorite bags, she would have absolutely bumped something off the list, but I got her the month after I did that list. <sighs> I am so happy I got this bag because I will talk about the bonus one and my, you know, five extra ones. I guess I'm really making up all my own rules, but literally, I'm so glad I didn't, I'm so glad I didn't pass this bag up because for so long I was like, oh, I have my Bottega pouches. And then I got my Celine eyelet bag, hold on. Got my Celine eyelet bag and I said, this is so stinking gorgeous. Why is this so gorgeous? Why did nobody tell me? that Celine by Phoebe Philo. And I had a phantom luggage tote, but that smooth leather that she did, what nobody told me that it's like the most gorgeous, well-made bag of all time. And I almost didn't put on the light camel bag on my, you know, like epitome, like top tier up there in my wish list. I am so grateful that I got that bag. And so that she is on this list immediately. She's not going anywhere, okay? That bag is perfection and it just like it just looks and feels like me i think it's because she doesn't she doesn't photograph that well <laughs> she's not super photogenic in person literally she's perfect oh my god and i have one more wildly rogue one you guys are gonna be like what but i owned an auto linger ceramic bag okay so this is is a little coated with that okay so we know that there is a weird niche part of not just weird niche minimal cool but like actually weird part of me I can never say this designer's last name, so please, please correct me by Sheridan. I'm just gonna insert the name right here. The, uh, the Iris bag, I keep seeing it because of course I follow her on Instagram and I have been obsessed with this bag again for years. Thank you Pinterest probably for some weird rabbit hole that I went down. I want this bag so much. You have no idea. This piece inspired a piece that I made for my jewelry collection, the iris pendant and iris incense holder. I want this bag so darn much. It is literally perfection. I'm not getting married and I don't even have, I have no partner in any way, shape or form currently. And when I tell you, I, I wanna get married just so I can carry this bag. So that bag is going in this roster just because I'm gonna get married with this bag and then I wanna wear that bag all the time. Okay, and now for the bonus category, random. You, you Some of these you won't expect, some of these you will absolutely expect. I think with my knowledge now of myself, I would probably rebuy a Speedy 25. I'm a little confused because Nobody told me there was a Louis Vuitton Speedy 20. I have failed myself. And again, as Jesse just said, like collecting Louis Vuitton is addicting. I collected, I think eight bags in the last couple, no, in the last like whatever, six years or so. Plus, you know, it, no, it's, yeah, it's been a long time since I've been collecting, but then you just get into a zone where like, oh my God, there's such good prices, whatever. And nobody told me that there was a 20, which I guess is a new-ish size, but it could be like years old at this point. I just told this to my mom because she's been like here and there asking me questions. Oh, what size is your Speedy again? Do I want a Speedy? Wait, what is this? And it's, I was like, wait, we both might need to go. <laughs> why, why is this a thing? And so I might have to go see a Speedy 20, but for the sake of this video, I think I would keep my Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 because again, it's so funny. I will go two solid years back to back, two full solid years without ever wearing my Speedy 25. 
And then I'll somehow discover how good it is again and only wear that bag. Why, you ask? No idea. But this has been a cycle for the last 16 years. That's embarrassing, but it's really true. You know what? That's okay. And so I think even though there are years where I go with never even touching her, I know she will never go anywhere. And then I say to myself, oh my God, this is the best bag ever. So she might be my first one. She fits everything and is still small. And I'm also not ever afraid of her being rained on and being like smushed and whatnot. So she would be my go-to gal, which is awesome because that was my very first bag. I already kind of like put, I, I already covered this category in my, you know, like staple one. So this would be a bonus because I should have just taken my bags out. Apparently I'm being lazy right now, but my large double circle bag by the row in that light camel nude beigey, she is perfection. I, you guys know she's my, at least my top five favorite bags in my entire collection. I love that bag. Rain or shine. I love it with things stuffed in it. It was my weekender bag. I did a lot more weekend trips last year. It was my weekender bag for every single one and I love the bejesus out of it. It is so cool. And then when you have nothing in it, it's a vibe. And I already mentioned this essentially, but I couldn't, I could, I thought about a Jill Sander Goji bag, but I don't know what that bag is like. And even though there are other bags that I put on, you know, like ahead of it that I've never even seen before in my life, the Goji bag, kind of, like the Laura Piana kind of takes off that category anyways, I, I didn't understand the weight of how much I love my eyelet bag. And so she's going on this list. My Celine eyelet bag. I had no idea how good she was. Now I realize there are so many pouch-esque bags here, but that, apparently that's me. <laughs> apparently that's my vibe. She's so pretty. And I had to put her on here, especially because of the strap. Because it's like, it's dressy to non-dressy. It's day to evening. It's just so cool. The only thing that worries me is the white, but I've been able to wipe off you know, any little things here and there. And I even have a very worn one anyways, Celine eyelet bag. I, I couldn't make this list without apparently. And I'm sorry, my Bottega bandana foo lard bag. She is in, cause she's hanging. I wish she could have a focal point spot in my cabinet. That bag, every single time I look at that bag in my little hanging of collection of two bags, like it is, it, I love that bag so much. It's so me coated. Yes, it barely fits anything. Yes, you could really only wear her for an afternoon, a cute little dinner, a cute little museum, a cute little going out shopping situation. I don't care. I love that bag to pieces and I will, I will always have that bag in this list and every list, honestly. And you guys, that has been my fantasy slash if I had to completely redo my collection over what bags would I keep and what bags would I just completely fill. We did 10 plus five, so equals 15, but you know, I could whittle it down to those top 10 if need be, but we just had a little bit of fun. What would you guys start over knowing everything you know now, having, you know, here today in your collection with all the knowledge, with all the buying and selling or buying and collecting or being gifted, whatever, with all of the pieces that you have had and had the pleasure of wearing in your life, even if it was just for a day, what would you do next? What would you do with all that knowledge? I can't wait to hear down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Bye guys.